<laughs> All right, so let's open in prayer. All right, so Lord, we're just so thankful for this gathering. Lord, we pray over this place. Pray for your protection. Um, just pray for an open heaven. Ask that angels would come down and minister us today. Pray that there would be protection over the building. Jesus, we pray that your blood would cover this place and we'd assign angels to the doorways to protect us, break any attack of the enemy um, over our minds, yes. over anything that happens in this building today. Um, we just break it in Jesus' name, say you have no place here and no authority here. This is a house of the Lord. Amen. Just pray for greater uh, outpouring of light from this place to this community. We're just thankful for uh, what you're doing here, Lord, and the people that are involved in it. Just ask that you'd bless them and you'd strengthen them. And just pray over this session and the sessions to come this afternoon that, um, that things would be spoken that would speak to people's spirits and would uh, bring about change unto holiness and unto purity and unto just knowing you better. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. So I won't go through the whole introduction that I did yesterday. I know there's a, maybe a couple new people here, but I'm Vaughn, Spirit of Health, I'm in Grandview, Missouri. Uh, Chris and I have known each other for quite a few years when he was up at the House of Prayer up in Kansas City. And uh, we've been friends ever since. Uh, <clears throat> it's hard at a distance, but you know, nonetheless. So this class, yesterday we just kind of talked about the body and how the body's designed and how God designed the body and how amazing it is. And class two, this class is the roots of sickness and disease. And again, this is tied to a series that I did. Did I turn my microphone on? I did. Okay. This is tied to a series I did called uh, Partnering with God that I did twice. I did it in 2012 and then I redid it in 2015. So these are the notes from that. I won't perfectly go through the notes, which you'll see. So if you're trying to follow along, good luck. Um, encourage you to just maybe pay more attention to, to me instead of trying to figure out the notes because it definitely won't line up. Um, but yeah, the roots of sickness and disease. So I, I think this is a fascinating topic because, I mean, my gosh, who has not been touched by sickness, disease, chronic illness? Um, <clears throat> I'm just curious who here, like, I don't know, who, who's dealt with like serious, like, so you don't get singled out, but you or somebody in your family has dealt with like chronic long-term illness or know somebody in your family who has? Quite a few of you, probably at least half of you. Okay. Yeah. And, and, you know, a lot of people have these nagging issues going on that affect them, uh, you know, headaches and stomach issues and digestive issues are chronic today. And, uh, but the, the reality is, is people are suffering. People are dying prematurely. Um, people are not able to fulfill their, their purpose and maybe what the Lord would have for them because of sickness or disease or degeneration in their body. And so we want to, we obviously want to see that change. So, I start with, is the man-made system working? Because that's what most people know about. We've kind of lost the, the ancient ways, the ancient past, the herbalism, the way things used to be done. And so we look at like the man-made system and we say, is it working? And we're going to talk about it a lot more when I talk about this afternoon, the class called The Deception of the Medical Industry. Um, but obviously there's the positives that have happened. And we know people's lives have been saved from antibiotics. And we know people's lives have been saved from surgeries. And we know people have been shocked back to life that had heart attacks. My uncle was one of them. So I'm, I'm well aware of, uh, of some of the, th the good things that are happening in our medical industry. Um, my joke is, is if you have a broken leg, don't go see an herbalist. Because they're not, that was supposed to be a joke, but they're, they're not going to help you much, obviously. You know, you need a doctor to set your bone so that it can heal properly. Um, <clears throat> so reasons for sickness and disease. So I'm going to start with natural laws, which I am going to, I have it in here in the notes. There's a reason for sickness and disease. A, it says God created natural 
laws. Oh, I don't have my Bible. Can somebody grab my Bible real quick? It's right over on that table over there. Thank you. God created natural laws. And I just like to use logic here. I just like to give you some basic examples that make sense. Thank you so much. Because I think sometimes we have a tendency to think that we're just victims of sickness and disease and how could this possibly happen to me? And, um, or, you know, you believe what the medical system says that we don't understand these things and why they're happening and there's nothing you can do about it. And, or that, you know, they just strike out of thin air and that we're just innocent victims. But I really believe there's a cause and effect relationship to most of what we call sickness and disease. I'm not going to say there's not spiritual reasons we have sickness and disease. We know the, the demonic realm and they can affect people's lives and they can implant things in people's bodies in the spirit and I, I'm well aware of those things. But the vast majority of what people are suffering with, including Christians, is a result of cause and effect. God's design of the world. So when he spoke everything into existence, there's obviously natural laws. Has you, have you guys heard of gravity? Okay. So, I mean, Jesus was tempted with that, right? <laughs> jump off the cliff. The angels will save you. What happens if you jump off a cliff? It's stupid enough that God probably won't save you. I mean, that's just the reality because that's a natural law and you don't tempt God you know, by doing things contrary to his laws and design and just expect him to make it okay. So, <clears throat> we always have to ask these questions like, how do people who love Jesus, how are we riddled with sickness and disease? And then the contrary to that, how do people who don't know the Lord, oftentimes very healthy? And they can heal of cancer. They can heal of diabetes. They can heal of all these various issues. It's because of natural laws. You know, the Bible says it will rain on the, the, the righteous and the unrighteous. So it's based off of his natural laws of creation. I'm going to give you a, a scripture. You can turn there if you want. But I, I like Ecclesiastes 3. I think, it's a, I think it's a fun one. Because, you know, we are special. Human beings are obviously special to God because we're part of his eternal family. And that was his heart and that was his desire. Um, but listen to what it says in Ecclesiastes in chapter, chapter 3, uh, 18. I said to myself concerning the sons of men, God has surely tested them in order for them to see that they are but beasts. For the fate of the sons of men and the fate of beasts is the same as one dies, so dies the other. Indeed, they all have the same breath, and there is no advantage of man over beast, for all is vanity. All go to the same place, all from the dust, and all return to the dust. So he's very clearly saying here that, you know, we're, we're subject to the same natural laws as animals. And if you look at animals, they have basically the same organs. They digest food and they have a liver and they have adrenal glands and they have a lymphatic system and they have blood vessels. But if you look at animals in nature, they don't have autoimmune diseases and psychosis and cancer and heart disease and diabetes and <clears throat> autoimmune conditions and everything else going on. And why is that? Well, it's because that they are living within God's natural created order. They live within their instincts that tells them that they should be in the sun every day and they should eat plants and leaves and things that God provided for them. And they don't suffer from these afflictions. And as humans, we do these things to ourselves. Um, you know, it, 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 it really comes back to, to sin, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, just man going his own way. Um, the animals who do get our diseases are who? Our cats, our dogs, the animals we take care of, the animals that live the same sedentary lives that we do, that eat the same junk we do, or worse, that process 
dog food. You know how they say don't feed animals people food? Well, what does that say about the food we're eating? I mean, my goodness. Shouldn't that tell us something? <laughs> Shouldn't our animals be able to eat the foods that we eat? So there's a natural created order. And I, I just have to share that with Christians because, again, we think everything's demonic and everything's an attack. And demonic's involved, but it's because they deceive us into doing things that let us destroy ourselves. Do you understand that demons have to function within the design of how God's natural created order? Does that make sense? So in other words, if I'm standing on the edge of a cliff, a demon can't come up and just push me off the cliff or push me into oncoming traffic. There's, there's, they, they, they are confined. They're still under the control and the hand of God. Even though the demonic and Satan rules this world, they're still under the hand of God's natural created order. And there are certain things that they can and cannot do. So the best thing that they can do is they can deceive us into destroying ourselves. And that's what we do. That's what we do through our food choices, through what's happening in the medical industry and, you know, pornography. I mean, so many different things that destroy human beings. Because, you know, again, if, if, if we think everything is spiritual or demonic or whatever, so does that mean our dog that has cancer is like under some demonic influence or something? You know, I mean, I just ask that question. So um, the other examples I give of cause and effect And it might sound silly and it might seem like an extreme example, but obviously God created everything in the world, but the work of man's hands is taking things that are toxic and not designed for human function and putting them in the body. You know, so you wouldn't, let, let's say gasoline was cheaper than water. You wouldn't just start drinking gasoline. You know, it would kill you. You know, if your dog drinks antifreeze, like if people heard of dogs drinking antifreeze and dying, okay, it's, it's poison. It's a toxic chemical. So we wouldn't put those things in our body. So there's cause and effect. We can't believe that the things we do don't harm our bodies. The problem is, is we kill ourselves slowly and we, and we put things in our body that works our body towards death and not towards life. And we're okay with it if it doesn't affect us immediately, like a donut, okay? It doesn't hurt us right away, so we don't think anything of it. It's just a donut. What's the big deal? Well, these are the things that kill us slowly. I read a book one time. Um, that really struck me, and I wrote all these notes and I wrote really small, but um, there's this guy named uh, Jocko Willink. I don't know if you, any, any of you have heard of him, but he was a, a Navy SEAL and he was in Iraq and he wrote a book that like just blew me up. It totally changed. It was called Extreme Ownership and it was about being a leader and it was about owning everything and taking responsibility for everything and there's no such thing as bad teams, only bad leaders. And uh, it was an amazing book and a lot of really good quotes in there. But one of his quotes was, uh, most of us are not killed in a great war. We're taking apart slowly, convinced to take an easier path. Our daily compromise after compromise slowly chips away at who we're designed to be. And so that's the work of the enemy is to every day make choices that compromise your life, that compromise your health, that compromise what you're putting your time and your attention to. Anything that can distract you from Jesus, he doesn't care if he can hurt you or kill you right away, as long as you're completely distracted from the Lord or you're doing things that cause a slow self-destruction of our own bodies. And that's what we do. Um, so it takes discipline, and it's, it's definitely a challenge. Um, none of us wake up and say, okay, I want to ruin my life today, or I want to ruin my health today. It just happens slowly over time. And a lot of it's because we're doing all these things that are contrary to God's design, and we don't even think about it. I mean, just go back to the Garden of Eden. We have a program. It's a simple thing. It's called Eating by Design. And we did it because, you know, I don't... There's a million crazy diets out there and there's this diet and that diet and the, I mean, and some of those are, are, are good and that's fine, but there's ketogenic and there's Whole30 and there's just like a hundred things out there, right? Eating by design is about getting back to 
the food that God gave us because that's what makes sense in our bodies. Your body doesn't understand Coca-Cola. It's a foreign poison to the human body. There's no rivers flowing with Coca-Cola. They won't be there in heaven. Why you think that has anything to do with the health of your body that God created makes zero sense whatsoever, yet we do it because it's our culture, we like it, and it's the norm in our culture. If nobody in our culture drank Coke and be like, that's bad for you, you wouldn't do it either, but you do it because it's accepted. But it won't be, it won't be an eternity, I, I'm sorry to say. So maybe you say, okay, well, Coke won't be an eternity, so I'm gonna have as much as I can right now, because I won't get to have it forever. Okay, I'm joking. But no, this is the reality. You know, we're putting man-made weird things in a human body designed by a living God made in his image that gave us a garden of Eden that gave us water, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, and nothing else. And so we really should be questioning what we're doing and what we're putting in our body. Another great example is a zoo. Do you know when they first started this whole zoo thing, I mean, they couldn't keep an animal alive to save their lives. They take animals out of their natural habitat, living within God's natural created habitat, and they bring them over and they put them in cages and they hardly know what to feed them and all these animals would just die. And the same would happen to us. If we put you in a cage and fed you Twizzlers and <laughs> Twinkies every day and Coca-Cola, you know, it might take a while, but pretty quickly you'd get really sick, you'd get diseases and, and you would die. And so I just want to give people the reality. The reality is, is you can love Jesus and eat horribly and get diabetes and die prematurely and not live anywhere close to the fullness of what God would have called for you to do in your life. I mean, is that fair for me to say? So we just have to really uh, believe this reality and, and uh, you know, just foster stewardship um, and how God created and designed us to live and what he would want for us. I mean, if God's a holy God and we're holy vessels and holy temples, we really should be putting things in that honor holiness. That is why God gave a whole series of food laws in the Old Testament. We throw it all out because Jesus can. I don't, I'm not going to get into it. But the fact that we throw out God's wisdom from the Old Testament because of Jesus, it's almost like we're using Jesus as our excuse to now treat our bodies poorly because he covers it. Be very careful there. God's wisdom is because he knows what's best for humanity, the human body, holiness, and what, how he wants his vessels to operate. And again, I'm not gonna get into it. I've talked about it in other classes, but there are certain things we put in our body that God talks about in the Old Testament that he calls an abomination, and it's abominable flesh. Why? Because you shouldn't put abominable flesh in a holy temple. And you guys might be knowing some of the things I'm talking about. But I just want you to pray about that, you know? It's not a salvation issue. What you eat isn't a salvation issue, but it is a holiness issue. And it is a purity issue. And it does matter. It does matter. All right. So I'm gonna get into something that's been on my heart that I just wanna share it. Um, I'm gonna kinda lay a, a story here for the battle that we're in tied to sickness and disease and why this is happening. So I think it's probably safe for me to say that the devil hates you, right? <laughs> hates you, he hates your body, he hates life, especially women and pregnancy and giving birth. He hates everything related to human beings, especially the fact that God loves us so much and we get to have a direct relationship with him and he just, that all that just infuriates the devil. And so he wants us to be, you know, sick, struggling, uh, disconnected from God, focused more on our, our sickness and our disease than we are on God. Um, so we, we can't function well to serve God. I mean, he just, he really, he really wants to just keep us down. I mean, there's no doubt about that. I don't think anyone would disagree with that. And the system's against us. You know, we know the world belongs to Satan. You'd have to separate yourself from this world system. And, and I think choosing to eat well and eat clean and eat pure and avoid processed foods and about junk food is about 
separating ourselves from this system. I mean, why do we fast? And why do we experience God at such profound encounters when we fast? We're separating ourselves from this worldly food system of destruction and death. I can't wait till we talk about fasting. So there's a war against your flesh. And I'm going to set it up. I'm going to set up the battle scene for you guys so that you guys understand what you're up against. Like I said in the first class, sorry, we're not getting in to eat this and eat that. And maybe we can do that when I come back another time. Or you can watch all the hundreds of videos I have on my website or look at the Eating by Design program. I want to set up the big picture for you why this matters. So the reason the devil wants to afflict us and keep our flesh down is because the reality is that it's not until the bride rises up in fullness that Christ is coming back. So we usher in Jesus Christ. You guys know that, right? So as long as people are afflicted and they're not have fullness with Christ, he buys time on this earth. So Jesus will return when the bride is made ready. My, I mean, I stand on this scripture. You can look at it real quick. I'm just going to read one scripture, but it's 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. Does anybody know that scripture? It's awesome. I'm going to go back a little bit to 1 Thessalonians 5, 19. Do not quench the spirit. You know, I just want to touch on this real quick because my, my wife said this. She said... To me, you know, I don't know it's so much about, you know, <sighs> fasting all the time or, you know, you can get into legalism about how you eat and what you eat and veganism and this and that. You can get into all kinds of stuff. Um, but my wife said to me one time, she said, I, I don't think it's so much about that, but it's, are you doing things that interfere with the Holy Spirit working in your life? Yes. And that's what this says right here. Do not quench the Spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances, but examine everything carefully. Hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from every form of evil. And this is the scripture. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. May your spirit and soul and body be preserved complete without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So when the bride is made ready, we will have fullness in body, soul, and spirit. Christians forget the body part, that we have a body, that our body matters, that purity and holiness it matters in your physical body. But there will be a remnant bride who is raised up for the second coming of Jesus Christ that is pure, clean, and holy in their body, soul, and spirit. So I stand on that, 1 Thessalonians 5.23. Okay, so your authority, this is almost like a Bible teaching than a nutrition class, but oh well, I love this stuff. Your authority is in your humanity. So before you call it blasphemy, it's all about Jesus, obviously, and all the authority is in Jesus, but I want you to understand that your authority is in your humanity. It's in your flesh, okay? So... What happened? I'm going to just give you the story here. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm setting this up so you guys understand that the battle we're in here over your flesh, over your physical bodies. God created Adam and Eve. He gave them authority to rule over the earth. What did they do? They gave it back to Satan. Now Satan has authority to rule over the earth. Okay? Legally, God cannot... <clears throat> wipe out Satan and just fix everything. Legally, only a human being can overcome the kingdom of darkness on this earth. So only a human can take it back. So we know who that human was that took it back, right? His name's Jesus. Okay. So Genesis 3.15 says, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and their seed. Enmity is battle. So it was Jesus who came back, he claimed authority, he defeated the kingdom of darkness, he defeated death, 
right? Which the Bible in Corinthians says is, it's the last enemy that will be defeated is death. And Jesus did that. He conquered death. And Jesus will rule and reign forever with us. But what's happening now? The battle still rages, right? Satan's still here. Death is still occurring. Sin is still happening, even though Jesus beat all of that. Why? It's the preparation of the bride. It's training. We are in training for a battle. And some of you guys know Terry Bennett. He wrote a book called Why We Fight. He sets this up really nicely in there. I would encourage everybody to read that book if you haven't. Why We Fight by Terry Bennett. But the battle is still raging because you're in training. You're training to become a pure bride that will rule and reign with Jesus Christ forever. So, we have authority in, because we have a fleshly body. So it's Jesus in us that is the authority over all the dark forces on this earth. So the question is, can you become an empty vessel that Christ can work through you so that we have that authority to rule and reign with him? And that's why there's a battle against our flesh. That's why the enemy wants to destroy us. You know, hold on. Yeah, so I said that already. Satan knows that if you can keep Christ out of a people, out of our bodies, that we, if we don't have holy vessels, they're full of all kinds of other distractions and pollution. And you think of all the things going on. People don't think of the sickness and the disease and the pollution and the toxicity and the waste in their body as something that could actually inhibit uh, the flow of the Holy Spirit or God working in their lives. I mean, we believe it when it comes to pornography and anger and all of these other issues. But again, the reality is, is to be pure, empty, holy vessels, we want to be cleansed of all impurities, body, soul, and spirit. And so that's what we have to go after. Um, this is why I love, this is why prayer is so powerful too. It's because, because we have the authority in humanity, in our flesh, through Christ, um, our prayers make a difference. You know, nothing happens in heaven and nothing can change on earth if people aren't praying, period. Because God works through human beings, right? God works through human beings. There's angels sitting. Terry talks about this in his books. There's angels sitting that have nothing to do. They have no assignments because humans aren't praying. Humans aren't assigning them tasks. They're supposed to be working with us. They're here with us. You know, there's a lot more angels than there are demons, right? <laughs> How many demons fell? third so there's two thirds <laughs> angels working for us but are we putting them to work you know so um so so prayer shifts things in heaven and we can only pray and we have that authority through christ because you know we're, we have we have flesh and you think about how god always works through vessels he always worked through people you know moses He's just like, man, I know like you don't think you can talk very good and you're not a good leader, but I just need a body. I just need a vessel to work through. That's all I need. And even like when he destroyed uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, he, he had a, a little consultation with Abraham, right? They worked it out together. God does everything through human beings. Again, I'm just establishing that us ruling and reigning with Christ and overcoming the kingdom of darkness has to do with the fact that we have flesh. Because once you pass, the best you can do is help from the other side. I don't know where everybody's at and I don't want to stretch anybody's theology, but I'm going to give my testimony tomorrow. I've had multiple encounters with John the Baptist and different things, but they're, the saints, the best they can do is help human beings it helps them fulfill their fullness and their calling, um, even after they've passed in, in the flesh. Um, but the best they can do is minister to us and help us to overcome 
the kingdom of darkness on this earth because it's going to happen through human beings on this earth. Am I making sense? Okay. It's why Jesus is the only one that can come back because he's still an, a, a human being alive with flesh. It's why he has to come back to finish the job because that's legal because Adam and Eve gave it back to Satan. Okay, so, and when he comes back, it's not going to be pretty. <laughs> it's not going to be pretty. Okay, so, I hope that made sense. I hope you understand the battle, why there's a battle over our flesh, why the devil wants to keep us down, keep us short, keep us from fullness, keep Christ out of us, keep us unclean, polluted, unhealthy, sick, diseased, our brains messed up, not thinking properly, consumed with our sickness, tied in bondage to the medical industry. This is why. So that he can have free reign on the earth and nothing's fighting against him. So we have to change. We have to get into alignment uh, with having fullness in body, soul, and spirit. Okay, so now what? We have the cause and effect thing we talked about, okay? The natural laws. Um, devil after, after us, keeping us down, keeping us sick, keeping us deceived. Every distraction you can possibly think of in a modern world. Um, we have to be really intentional about health. So what the Lord has shared with me that we have to do is we have to take back the land, right? I feel in my spirit, I'm not going to say I know this for sure, but I feel in my spirit that what's going to happen on this earth is a reenactment of the Old Testament. God's going to raise up judges and prophets. He's going to pronounce judgment. Some are going to turn, some aren't. There's going to be armies invading. There's going to be all kinds of crazy stuff going on. We don't know exactly what it's going to look like. But the Lord is telling me to take back the land. And it's the promised land, okay? Moses led people to the promised land through their whining and their complaining and their moaning. And, you know, they wanted leeks and onions. Like, we can't stop getting Starbucks and donuts. It's crazy. It is crazy. I'm, and I'm guilty too, okay? Don't think I'm standing up here like holier than thou. I'm not, okay? I'm on a journey too. But we have to take back the land. Because even though Moses brought people to the promised land and all this promised land would form, what happened with Joshua? Only a couple got to enter in, Joshua and Caleb. Everyone else was scared to death. Giants, Nephilim, outnumbered by the bazillions. <laughs> Here's your promised land. Go get it. So what did they have to do? They had to trust God. They had to take back the land. They had to fight for it. So if you don't fight for your health, if you don't fight for your physical body, you're not fighting for fullness in Christ in you. You won't have it. Just being really, really real with you guys. We have to take back the land. We have to remove the ites from the land that's in us, that's interfering with God functioning in us and through us. Pure, clean, holy vessels have no room for ites. And it's not just the physical sickness. It's obviously our emotions and I'm into inner healing and I'm into all of that stuff. It's all of it. It's all of it. He wants all the impurities removed. All of them. So we have to claim our authority. And my wife and I do inner healing sessions and it's changed our lives. It, it's brought up stuff from our past and our childhood and it's like, ah, you know, there's a lot of junk in all of us. That's why one of the, my favorite things to say, I don't know where I heard this, but it's always stuck with me, is everybody you meet is fighting a battle that you know nothing about. Right. This is why we don't judge. This is why we don't condemn. This is why we don't say things to people that we shouldn't, because everybody's in a war. And if you really, really, really love Jesus and you're really, really going after fullness, whoo, your life is a war zone. Sorry. I'm going to just end this little portion with this. This was something that was prophesied over me, and um, 
I don't know if I'll fully share it tomorrow when I give my testimony, but this is part of the prophecy. It said, from within to without shall the movement be in the preparation of the warriors. From within to without will the movement be in the preparation of the warriors for the end time battle that's coming. Whew. Ruah. Thank you for letting me share that because that's really been on my heart and I just wanted to share that. So I hope that was, was beneficial to somebody. So God wants pure vessels. He speaks through us. He speaks through our bodies. I'm going to go actually to the notes now, if you can believe that. Um, definition of disease. Where am I at on time? Okay. Definition of disease. This is just a dictionary definition, but it's a condition of the living animal or plant body or one of its parts that impairs normal functioning and is typically manifested by distinguishing signs and symptoms. Okay? So that's the, the dictionary definition. That makes sense. Impaired normal functioning, manifesting in symptoms. I kind of made up an alternative viewpoint. And I wrote it out, misalignment with God's design and natural created order manifested by distinguishing signs and symptoms, which act as a means of communication between the creator and the created as an act of love in order to provoke a change to restore harmony, balance, and oneness. And I talked about that last night, that every symptom Everything you think is going wrong with your gut and your digestion and your thyroid and your liver and every, every pain you're having is all a sign of a symptom of a problem. That you don't cover up with a pain med or a drug or a steroid. That you actually seek fullness and wholeness in how God designed you to live. Most illness is due to cellular malfunction caused by cellular toxicities or cellular malnutrition, both of which can be avoided and overcome naturally. So... Yes, that is what disease is. And um, we, again, I think a lot of it's because of our misunderstanding of the body, our medical industry. It's like disease is this great mystery. And it doesn't have to be this great mystery. And it doesn't have to be this all-consuming thing. And I know when people are really chronically sick, it's, it's a real big issue. Um, but there's a lot of different ways to overcome it. Cleansing and fasting, which we'll get into in the next session. That's the main thing the Lord's put on my heart. I mean, that will purge us from not only physical sickness and disease, but emotional sickness and disease is stored in our tissues. And it comes out when you fast. <laughs> I'm laughing because I fast so much and my wife's like, I just sometimes don't like you when you fast. And I'm like, I'm sorry, it's all the junk coming out. So it's a refining fire. It's a purifying fire. Fasting is. It's the best way to get all that toxic waste out of your body. Not only physically, but also emotionally. So if you have a, I don't like using the word disease, but if you have an imbalance, just a health imbalance, something not going right in your body, you're not a disease, you're not a diagnosis, it's not a life sentence, you know, again, that's all the false beliefs of the medical industry, but it doesn't mean there's not a problem. But so we have to realign with God and his natural created order, getting back to just not thinking we're smarter than animals and just like getting back to being in the sun and exercising and eating foods that God created. It's not rocket science, guys. It's really not. It's just that we're so consumed by our fleshly desires and our culture and the way we grew up and the way our family's always eaten. You know, you want to talk about genetics. It's because your whole family ate the same way for four or five generations in a way that destroys the body. Of course, you're passing on heart disease because you're getting sicker and weaker each generation. You're passing that on. But I want to say that if you are sick or struggling with anything, you never, ever, ever let the enemy steal your first love. 
right? No matter what you're going through. Because God can and will get us through. But the reality is, is some people, you know, they're not getting well. The whole church is praying for them. Thousands of people are praying for them. They're not getting well. Why? So how does God heal? Okay, I want to give you a couple of examples of how God heals. I love the God of miracles. You guys love the God of miracles? Yeah. Who's seen a miracle? I hope all of you. Okay, good. God does miracles. Okay, but I also love the God of design and natural created order. Do we love that God too? <laughs> he heals with miracles. But a couple things about that. One is, is that God sent everything into motion upon his natural created order when he created everything. And life perpetually happens based upon our decisions, life and death, I should say. He actually has to step outside of his natural created order to perform a miracle. Right? He stops things from happening the way they would normally progress. That's a good God. He fixes a lot of things that <clears throat> you shouldn't have to, but he's good. The other way God heals is probably a, maybe a, a least preferred method. It's a journey. It's long suffering. It's unto maturity. It's unto growth. It's unto holiness. It's unto patience. I hate that part. But it's like, it's where I'm at. And I'm cool with it. You know, we just have to come to accept it. Do you guys know the story about the, uh, you know, the rowboat story? Have you guys heard that? The guy was on his roof and there was a flood and he was like, God, please save me. God, please save me. And a rowboat went by and he's like, no, no, God's going to save me. And then a motorboat went by. No, no, God's going to save me. And then a cruise ship went by. No, no, God's going to save me. And then he drowns and he goes to heaven. And he says, God, why didn't you save me? He said, I sent you three boats. What do you want? <laughs> right? And that's us and our sickness and disease. God, I have this. Take it away. God, I have this. Heal me. And he's sending you to, I don't know, a nutrition class. Or you meet a, a chiropractor shows up in your, uh, in your church the next day. And you go to him and he changes your life. You know, God, puts, God works through people. Even miracles often happen through people, through angels ministering, through people pronouncing it, proclaiming it. <clears throat> God works through people. So look, if you, if you have any issue or struggle going on, look, keep your eyes focused on God and look for the signs and symptoms. Pray for the miracle. I'm cool with the miracles. I think the miracles are awesome. But there's a time and a place and a reason he does everything that he does. And most people... He would rather put on a journey unto fullness and unto wholeness. I don't want to go back to Babylon. I want to understand and get the ites out of me that's going to... I don't want to just be healed so that I can go back to all my stupid ways. Most of the stuff we do is just stupid. <laughs> that might be a bad word, but it's like the reality. I mean, it's all is vanity. Maybe that's a better way to say it. All right. God also uses sickness and disease. Okay, this is a really, really important thing to understand. Now, the devil's afflicting us. He wants us to destroy ourselves and do all these horrible things that keep us down. But God doesn't waste a thing. Has, have anybody, have any of you guys seen that movie, uh, I Can Only Imagine? Okay. Did God use cancer to change people's hearts? Yes, he did. Okay. And we have somebody who gets cancer. We just want God to heal us. Okay. God knows the hearts of everybody involved with everybody who has any kind of sickness or disease. And so sometimes he might heal it. Sometimes he might not. Sometimes he might put you on a journey, but he's going to shift and change as many hearts to he's, he's more, let's just say this. He's more in, interested in bringing, changing hearts and bringing people into the kingdom than he is about your sickness. Amen. That's just true. So, 
I, I, that was a great movie, and, and that just really impacted me when I, when I saw that. Um, so he used his sickness, and so I just let him do that. Yeah. All right. Where am I at here? I can't read my own handwriting. That's half the problem usually. Oh, and I just put how many people finally and sometimes for the first time actually question their eternal existence when they get sick. You know, that a lot of soul searching takes place when people are sick. Or it, even if it's just a loved one or if it's your kid. You know, it, it can really, really change a person's heart. So God's, God's going to use that. So the last part I have on sickness and disease, um, and I'd like to go a little bit longer if that's okay, because I, you know me, I'm a big picture guy and I kind of laid a lot of groundwork, but I want to talk about weeding and watering the garden, which I have later. Uh, it's part B. I'm going to talk about like, in my last class where I talked about the roots of sickness and disease, I talk about the main toxicities and the main things going on in the human body that are keeping us from functioning the way God designed us to function. So we have to weed and water the garden. So if this is our body, if this is the vessel, if this is a garden, if this is a uh, soil that's supposed to produce seed and fruit, how many seeds can stick and how much fruit can develop if you're full of weeds? Right? And we're all full of weeds. We all have different weeds, but we all have weeds. So we need to weed the garden. And what's crazy about it is, you know, we just, we have to believe that it affects our spiritual walk. We actually have to believe the health of our physical bodies affect our spiritual walk, affect our relationship and our encounters with God. And you know what? You might not believe it until you experience it. I mean, I have so many cool stories that I don't think I'm going to share with you right now, but I think I have it written out to tell you later. But just people I've worked with and the encounters they've had with the Lord through cleansing and through healing. It's just amazing, 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 amazing. So here are the main causes of the sickness, the disease, the impurities. Again, cause and effect, things in the temple that are affecting the way we're supposed to function. Nutritional deficiencies, although I put that on a lower level, and we don't have that as much anymore as far as like major, major diseases, like I talked about scurvy yesterday, uh, rickets, those kind of things. But nutritional deficiencies are still an issue. We're made out of dust of the earth. We need certain vitamins and minerals. Our bodies do not function while you're on this fleshly or on this uh, earth. They will not function properly without the right nutrients. That's a reality. The other thing is all the chemical toxins and poisons. You know, there's, the, I, I think the latest count was 83,000 known man-made chemical toxins in our world today. And they cause sickness and disease and death and premature and uh, stillbirths and deformities. And it's just a disaster disaster. You know, the Seine River running through Paris, all the fish went female. There were no more males because of all the plastics and compounds that affect hormones and disrupt hormones. It's just horrible, all the chemical poisons and toxins. Heavy metals. Mercury wasn't designed to go in the mouth. Dennis still put it in people's mouth. That's quackery. The word for mercury in German is actually quackenschlagen. But uh, heavy metals were not designed to go in the human body in the amounts that they're going into. They cause serious disruption and dysfunction to the human body. The other big, big, big one is infections and infectious disease. This is, a, this is like the elephant in the living room that uh, you don't know about, nobody's talking about, you know, you, you, you get sick or you get a cold or a sinus infection or a urinary tract infection, you go to the doctor, get an antibiotic and oh, everything's okay. People are living 
with chronic sickness and disease because their body's riddled with infection. I, I a little bit alluded to it yesterday. Um, I actually just earlier this week, I was at Dr. Spinagle's clinic over in Oldsmar, Florida, and he sees the sickest of the sick people. Chronic Lyme disease, Borrelia, all the different spirochetes tied to Lyme's, uh, mold toxicity, petrochemical toxicity. I mean, these people have, are sick, sick, they've been sick for years. They've spent tens of thousands of dollars. The medical industry has completely failed to find out, have any clue what's going on with them. Uh, one guy saw 211 doctors because he couldn't figure out why he was in a wheelchair. And he had him walking in five months and dancing in eight months. So, you know, we don't have to be victims of what's happening to us. Uh, there are ways and solutions, and God has put many people in our path, if we can find them, that can help us heal. And, of course, he can do it, you know, himself as well. But this infectious issue is a big, big deal. Um, people are struggling with chronic I call it chronic low-grade systemic infections that has their immune system completely wiped out. There is a, a, a doctor who wrote a whole book on uh, cancer tied to heat therapy. I, I'll just mention this real quick because it's fascinating to me. But he found that uh, cancer is killed by heat. And all the cancer doctors you talked to all said the same thing. All these people that came in with cancer all said virtually the same story. They never got sick. If you never get sick, it's probably a really bad sign. Okay, because our world is so toxic and polluted that your body should be stimulating a healing response and throwing out toxins and poisons. So I, I have people that I know they're unhealthy and they just brag about how they never get sick. Well, if your body's so weak that it can't stimulate a healing response, that's bad. I mean, my girls this last winter, oh my gosh, we got rocked. They were sick all the time. And I was like, praise God that they're sick because that's a healing response. That means they're strong enough to push toxins and poisons out of the body. That means they're developing a fever that kills infections and burns sickness and disease out of the body. Again, if we had any understanding of the human body, we'd, we'd never buy all this junk in the drugstores that stops God's natural reactions of what cleanses and purifies the human body. It is complete ignorance just in our culture, perpetuated by the... Uh, medical industry, obviously for money. I'm not saying all the intentions were always bad, but it, it works against how God designed the body to function. There's addictions. There's excitotoxicity in the brain where people have toxins and metals and mold and uh, Lyme disease affecting their brain that affects their glutamates, that affects and triggers a fight or flight response and they have uh, these excitotoxins in their brains that cause them to crave and to crave and to crave. Sugar, caffeine, alcohol, drugs. Do you think all these people are just crazy? You know, there's real physical things happen in our body that affects our mental and emotional health. We always look at it like the opposite way. We always look at it like everything's like a spiritual problem. There's a gal that I know who wrote a book. Um, I know her. She's not a friend of mine, but she's in Kansas City. And her name's uh, Jackie Shepard, but she wrote a book called When the Body Hijacks the Mind. And it's a brilliant book because it talks about the body and our gut. We talked a little bit about leaky gut yesterday, but when your gut and your belly and your intestines aren't working right, and things are getting through and affecting your brain, it causes you to feel out of control. Um, all the people that are in asylums and mental institutions, none of them should be there. I'm not saying there's not demonic possession, okay? but that's not why 98% of those people are there. It's because their body is toxic. That was never God's intention for them to live in an asylum and to be labeled. You know, this is happening to children. I'll get into that when we talk about the deception of the medical industry. I, I had a gal one time who was struggling with her health because she had infectious disease in her body. And the doctor forged and lied on the form 
so that he could prescribe her an antipsychotic medication and tried to get her instituted into an asylum. And the only thing that saved her was my chiropractor wrote a letter to the doctor demanding her to be released. This kind of stuff is happening. I don't even know why I shared that, but it's just, it's horrible the things that are going on out there. But when your physical body suffers, it affects the rest of your health. It affects your mental health. It affects your emotional health. It causes cravings and addictions and things you don't feel like you have control of. It's not normal. It's abnormal. You know something's not right, but you can correct it. You can heal your body. You can heal your gut. Sometimes it's not just mind over matter and I'm just gonna cut that out. You know, We all know that it, it can be a real struggle for a lot of people. And I do some testing for it. Um, I do lab testing, you can do urine tests, you can do heavy metal tests through the hair, you can do saliva tests to check hormones, you can check chemicals. Um, the infections are the biggest one. Mold toxicity, I'm finding out it's like an epidemic. Epidemic problem, mold toxicity, that you don't hear about. Doctors are clueless about. Um, they don't test for the things that for, to find out why people are really sick. <laughs> They check your blood, check your symptoms, give you a drug. So you don't ever find out what's really going on with you and what's really wrong and how to heal and how to restore and how to recover. So the mold toxicity is a, a big, 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 big one that I'm discovering recently. Um, it's just a major problem. So, I mean, those are the main things. Those are the main things. Poor nutrition, chemical toxicity, heavy metal toxicity, infectious disease in the body. These things are destroying God's creation. And so it's always working in your body as like this dichotomy of life versus death. Things you put in your body and things that are happening in your body that lead to death or things that are of God, of light, of love, of oxygen, of health, of healing, of like this nice environment here in Florida that I would love to be a part of, um, much more conducive to a healthy lifestyle and you can move towards life. You know, the Bible says that our days are numbers and God knows when we're gonna die, but do you not think you play a role in that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we think that's just like predetermined. Yeah, he knows, but he also knows the choices you're gonna make in your life that's gonna either lead towards quicker death or more life. And you can choose those things that bring life, that remove the sickness and disease out of your body. All right, so eating healthy, cleansing, I, I just think it's, it's got to be a comprehensive program. It's got to be a lifestyle. You know, people want to go on a diet and lose some weight. You know, like if your whole goal is weight, there's more things that are important beyond that, trust me. Okay, there's a lot of uh, impurities in, in the body that you want, want to get out. But I really feel like a lot of people have one piece of the puzzle. You know, like you can live in Florida and be on the beach and in the sun and live with this amazing lifestyle and have a horrible diet and still not be healthy. Um, or you can eat really, really well and not exercise and not get out in the sun. So I, I think it takes a comprehensive plan, a comprehensive program. And it also, it's good to know what's going on inside of your body. You know, I always tell people I work with, especially Christians, I'm like, well, I don't say this to non-Christians because they would have no clue what I'm talking about. And I'm like, you got to figure out what the ites are that you need to get out of your land. Like, what's the toxicity? What's the poison? What are we going after? I mean, my, my daughter, I'm going to share this story more later, but she was born with mercury toxicity. She had one of the highest mercury levels ever seen um, by, the, by the lab. She wasn't vaccinated. She didn't have any fillings. She was born with it through mom. Mom's toxicity passes to the baby. So we had to remove that mercury from her body because she couldn't sleep at night. She complained about her legs hurting all the time. I had to carry her all around. That was not normal for a two-year-old child. And if we would have went the medical route, they would have probably had no idea what's going on. They probably would have gave her some drug to stop her muscles from convulsing, which probably would have caused other problems. And we never would have solved the problem and she'd just get worse and worse and worse and worse. And this is what's happening and this is what's destroying our children and our people. It's sick for lack of knowledge and lack of understanding. So we have to remove the invading things in our body, the disruption, the things that are disconnecting us 
from how God designed us to function and live. I said that already. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, the last thing I had here was just that really sick people, you know, who have chronic illness, you know, we just, we need to have compassion. And, you know, that's why I go through what I go through as part of my journey is because the Lord didn't give me a get out of jail free card. He's like, I'm going to pick this guy because he's a mess and I'm going to bring him through the fire because it helps you to develop compassion. It helps you to develop love. It helps you to appreciate what other people are going through. There's no other way. There's no other way. So I will end with that. Um, the next session we're doing is on, uh, my favorite topic is on, it's on fasting. So I'm pretty pumped for that. And we have a little time if, if you guys have a, a few questions or anything about, about what I said. Yeah. Something hit me hard that you said, and so I just want to understand a little bit of expanding on that. You said that if people never have cold <coughs> virus, that sort of thing, they can be in a low-grade infection situation. Do you think that there's a space above that, beyond that, where people can be feeding good things into their body and they still don't get flu? Virus? Yes. Yes, thank you for saying that. Yes, I absolutely believe that people can have really, it's just rare in our world today. You know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, absolutely. If people live in the sun, eating clean food, they do a lot of cleansing. Yeah, it's possible you could be really healthy, never get sick, and that would be a good thing. But it's, again, a lot of people are ill, they don't know it, and their, their immune system is even too weak to stimulate a healing response. But no, you're absolutely right. And I, I feel like that's the goal. You know, that's, uh, is it the end of Mark or whatever, where he talks about, you know, no, no poison or anything will harm you? Like that, I think that is what the Lord is going to get his remnant bride to, to that level, that nothing can harm us. So I'm, I'm all for that. Somebody else? Uh, will you repeat the question? So we'll Thank you. Yeah, her question, just to repeat that, was, is that, you know, you mentioned people that are, are sick, but they, are, they're, they never get sick, um, but they end up with cancer and those kind of diseases. Is it possible to never get sick because you're actually just at a higher level and you're really healthy and you live in a healthy lifestyle? And so, yes, absolutely. At least. So our daughter with our mercury toxicity, we did a couple of different mercury detoxes. The first one we did is called Quicksilver. Quicksilver is a company out of uh, Colorado, but they're worldwide and they have a lot of mercury detox protocols. Mercury is tricky because you have to actually pull it out of the tissues. It, it'll just sit there forever. You, you actually have to pull it out of the tissues and then you have to have something that binds it and then it has to be able to flush out of your system or to redeposit back into your body. I mean, it is so poisonous that, again, the life of all flesh is in the blood, okay? So God does everything to keep your blood pure and healthy. So it'll take the mercury and deposit it in the tissues, deposit it in the liver, deposit it in the kidneys, different parts of the body. So you actually have to get something that pulls it out. So we did Quicksilver, and then um, there's a spray called Metal Free that we, we used for a couple years. Uh, that's a really good spray. And then the recent one we're doing, it's more of just preventative because she's good now. I've checked her mercury levels three times and it went in half and then in half again. So her mercury level's going boop, 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 boop. And now I don't even test her because, well, I just, it's a hair test. I don't want to cut her hair anymore. So it's traumatizing. I think more for me and my wife than it is for her. Um, but uh, now we use this uh, micronized chlorella. That, um, that binds mercury and toxins and chemicals. And we just give it to both our girls every day because it just binds any kind of toxins or poisons or anything in the body. So, Did your wife have the mercury issue too? Yeah, so what happened is, yeah, that's exactly, because that's the only way it would happen because there was no other exposure. So my wife had a, a mouthful of fillings that was given to her by a dentist who lied to her in Hawaii and told her she needed all these fillings and she did it. And then right before we got married, she got all her fillings removed. We got married, we got pregnant, and we had a mercury toxic baby. But it's okay, it's part of our story. Yes? I've had mercury fillings taken out about 20 years ago, well, 16 years ago. And should I do some kind of a mercury detox now? It's hard to know. So she said, I had mercury fillings taken out, should I do a mercury detox? It's hard to know. I mean, you could if you just want to do something affordable and do a mercury detox, but unless you test for it, you don't really know. 
You don't really know if it's deposited in your body. I mean, your body has natural ways to eliminate things. That's why you can check mercury. Um, you can check it in your blood. You can check it in your urine. You can check it in your hair because the body's always trying to get it out. Like, you know, that's it's how God designed it. But there's things that can interfere with, with that. But you would have to check it to know for sure. Yeah. Um, you mentioned about like generations. Yes. Like, five, six generations. Oh. How, when it comes to like health, like of like a parent, how, um, like how's that passed down? Is it is it strictly diet related, or is it, like, is it actually like hereditary? Yeah. So we asked about like uh, generations. Is it actually hereditary? Is it diet related? I believe it's mostly. Now there's variations to this, but a big part of it is uh, toxicity passed down. So mom will pass her toxicity down to the baby. I mean, in ancient cultures they gave pregnant women very specific foods. I mean, this is before processed foods even existed. They gave them only the highest nutrient dense quality foods because this, they, the birth of a healthy child was so important to them. I mean, it's like we eat junk and then we get pregnant and be like, oh, maybe I'll stop X, Y, Z, you know? So a lot of it is uh, passed down toxicity, um, but I definitely see weaknesses. And I see this in the eye when I do the iridology and look in people's eyes. You can see thyroid weakness in a baby or liver weakness in a baby. I have seen black spots on the lungs, in the eyes, through the eyes, black spots, which is a damaged spot on lungs of children whose parents were smokers. So they're, they're, they're born, you know, we're a product of our environment. So yeah, that definitely plays a role. Yes. Uh, so can I like look at my my parents or like my, my father uh, and his, so he recently passed away a couple of years ago. So I, I, I know why, I know why he died. So can I look at his problems of why he died and, and, and like prudently sure. like try not to be like that? <laughs> right. Yeah. That's the goal, right? We just change a generation, right? So uh, yeah, I mean, that's the thing with genetics is genetics is just, you just need to change your genetics. It's not this inevitable downward spiral. You change your genetics to go back the other direction. You stop doing what your parents did. You know, if your parents smoked and died of lung cancer, obviously you wouldn't smoke. But um, so possibly. So genetic weaknesses can be passed on, but it does not mean you're subject to your parents' genetic weaknesses. You can have a weakness there, but if you live a good, healthy lifestyle, you eat clean, you cleanse, you do all the right things, you should never have to struggle with the issues your parents struggled with. Everybody in your whole family could have died of a heart attack. There's no reason you should die of a heart attack, none whatsoever. And if you believe that that's inevitable and that's going to happen, it's a lie. And if a doctor tells you that it's a lie. So we, it, it's about changing, repenting, changing, going the other direction, changing future generations. That's why our heart is so passionate for children and seeing them change because we want fullness with them in Christ but we know the destruction that's after them and their physical bodies. It's the reality. Um, I did a hair analysis, I think it was about four years ago, and um, it's just kind of been on my heart lately to do another one. When I do it, how long do um, you know get the results and then see what I need to work on? How, when would I do like a follow-up one to see if... Oh, well, if you've seen changes or whatever? Yeah, is that like a yeah. way that you would do it? Yeah, so she asked if you do a hair analysis to see what's going on, how often should I maybe follow up with that? Um, if it's mercury toxicity or something and you want to make sure you're on the right track, I, I usually say three months, but six months. I mean, you want to give, you want to make some changes and give it time to see the changes that are working. So like our daughter with the mercury, just as an example, I did it in six months and then I did it again in six months and I saw the mercury level drop in half and drop in half. And I was satisfied with that. I could keep doing it, but like, I'm cool. Like, so I would say every three months at the soonest, if you're wanting to see if you're seeing change with what you're doing, but I would say six months is probably fine. Yeah. Yes. You said you've been seeing a lot of mold toxicity. How mm -hmm. are you testing that? The lab I use has a test called mycotox and it checks for eight mycotoxins, aspergillus, Ocratoxin, Rorodin E, which is the infamous black mold, um, aflatoxin, if I didn't say that one. So it, it checks for a lot of these um, 
Now there's thousands of mycotoxins, um, but it checks for the main ones. And it's, I, I will venture to say, and I'm stepping out of a limb here, but I think I'm pretty safe in saying that people you know that are chronically ill for years with no answers, they're all mold toxic. How do you test for the mold toxic? I mean, what it's a urine, urine test. Urine. Pee in a cup, send it to the lab, and you can find out. Have you heard or seen that? I've read that the mold has become such a large problem because of all of the EMFs because when mold is exposed to EMF, it, the mycotoxins multiply like 600 times per minute hmm. or something hmm. like that. I haven't heard that. She said mycotoxins uh, reproduce from EMFs. It's possible. I don't know. I, the Lord's talked to me a lot about mold because um, it's an issue I've, I deal with and a lot of people I see deal with. And it's one of the reasons I went to Dr. Spinagle's clinic because he's having success with it. But I, I'm contending for the Lord to give us other answers. So you can pray with me. Um, but he's been talking to me a lot about heat and fire because uh, it's obviously spiritual too in our bellies. But um, it's a cold, wet, damp condition. And that's the condition of, in our bodies. Um, and so we, we need to shift and change that environment inside of our bodies, mainly. Yes? Going off of mold, it just reminded me of what I heard about the things that were from the ground, whether almonds or cantaloupe, I can't remember what things that were caused, things that you shouldn't eat, whether it's peanuts or things that were from the ground. Yeah. Does that have to do anything with this kind of mold? Oh, it totally does. Yeah, she's asking about foods and foods that are on the ground and contaminated with mold. I mean, why do you think peanuts cause anaphylactic shock in people? An average peanut has 23 different molds and funguses on it. That's why we switch to almond butter instead of peanut butter. But the moldiest foods are corn. Think of the most common reactive foods that people react to. They're all moldy foods. Soy. Corn, peanuts, wheat, and other grains. Those are your moldy foods. Those are your moldiest foods. We can get a long conversation about that, but um, yeah, this mold issue is an epidemic. And again, it's not so much the mold's fault. <laughs> it's not the mold's fault. It's the environment inside of our bodies. It's the way I've treated my body and destroyed my body out of ignorance for mo most of my entire life that created the condition I'm in. But it's a good God who talks to me and teaches me how to restore that, that I'm contending for. And I want that for other people too. Let's do two more. Yes. So you mentioned the cold, wet, damp condition that kind of elicits that mold, um, that environment for it. But you also mentioned that it's also a spiritual condition. So do you think they're mutually exclusive or could they, I mean, could they be mutually exclusive, right? So you just have the environment or you have the spiritual issue. I mean, I think you definitely have to have the environment. I don't think you're just, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. You, you know, so I guess is what I want to know is, so you've got the environment that needs correcting, but what would the root of that spiritual condition be? I don't know. That's a good answer. I'm praying for that one. You know, obviously the Bible in Leviticus talks about mold and what to do about mold. And it's about burning things down and, <laughs> you know, there's people who have gotten sick, their whole family got sick, they burned their whole house down. I mean, this, again, this thing's an epidemic. When I said spiritual, I was saying the cold, wet, damp condition is tied to the Laodicean church, that we're neither hot nor cold, we're lukewarm and the Lord will vomit us out of his mouth. And so we have to change our lukewarm condition into a condition of the all-consuming, God is an all-consuming fire. So that, that was more what, what I was referring to. Now, could there be spiritual roots to it? Sure. I, I, I don't know. But we'll see if the Lord reveals that. I'll just do one more. Back there. <laughs> Yeah, good question. I mean, man, this is a thing where you can just get, you can get all whacked out in your brain about this stuff, okay? I'm just being really honest with you guys. Like, you got to be really careful to what you get, like, consumed with. I've, anyway, uh, my wife grew up eating, I mean, she's from Hawaii. She ate sushi, okay? 
Sushi's full of parasites. <laughs> it's raw fish. Why do you eat wasabi with it? Hopefully to kill the parasites. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, again, your choice, but it just depends on your system, how strong you are, if your system's strong or weak. If you've got a strong, healthy system, I mean, eating raw fish probably isn't a big deal, but if you have a weak system, you eat raw fish and you get parasites, you're in trouble. That's what's happening. People are picking this stuff up all over the place. So you can't be in freaking out and fear about it. I, I would focus on the Lord and focus on restoring your body and just being wise about your choices, but not being like, you know, not letting it consume you. You can get consumed about eating organic or consumed about being a vegetarian or a vegan or whatever. I'm just saying like these things, like reading food labels, like, whoo, you know, we've been through all that, been through all that. And I'm like, eh. Got to pick your battles. Let's just say it that way. Did you get like a degree in nutrition? Or Naturopathy. Okay. Yeah. So you did go to like college? Mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. college? Yeah, after I went to KU and double majored in business and French and worked corporate for seven years, <laughs> the Lord pulled me out of the fire into another fire. So anyway, that was fun. Uh, I know lunch is fairly soon. We can hang out and mingle. One o'clock, uh, just so you know, one o'clock is on fasting and it's the main thing the Lord has on my heart. So I'm probably going to go over an hour on the fasting and then I'm still going to do the deception of the medical industry. It's really good and it's important too. You guys can decide how long you want to stay. Obviously, you have freedom to come and go as you choose. <laughs> but um, I am probably going to go longer than an hour on the fasting class because I'm really passionate about it. Uh, and then again, you guys can stay later if you want for the, for the one after that. Okay.